uh, Breonna Taylor. Uh, if you haven't heard this this name, man, she hasn't get enough uh, publicity, enough, you know, right now coverage because of everything that's right. going on in the world. Well, her family filed a lawsuit after that botched police raid that killed the 26 year old. She was an EMT work in Louisville. She died a few months ago when Louisville police tried to execute that police raid Shame. to the wrong address, barged into her house. Her man got up thinking they were intruders, shot one in the leg, and they shot back and they killed her. And now they're trying to even charge. It was charging <laughs> the boyfriend with attempted murder. With attempted murder. I mean, come on. It's a no-knock warrant. Mm. If nobody knocks on your door at whatever time o'clock. Three in the, the morning. morning. In the afternoon, three o'clock in the morning, and you got a gun in it. By the way, he had a license to carry the gun, and you start shooting at somebody coming through your door, how are you going to be charged with attempted murder if they are the police? Because he's black. Let's mm. let's just is let's it, just is be it, clear. Is it just do you okay? I, I I feel you on that. Do you think it's just a color thing? Absolutely. Okay. Let's let's be honest. The 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 rules for this country have not been made to protect black people. Like we weren't even considered a human when they were writing the constitution. We were considered property. Mm -hmm. And then they said, you know what? We'll do you a favor. We'll we'll consider you three fifths of a human. Mm -hmm. So all of these laws that they've created systemically have been created to protect white people and still consider us property and less than human. So anytime they make a rule or make a law, the law doesn't include us. For example, yeah. you're allowed to protect your home except if you're black. Oh yeah, I totally agree with you. You know what I'm saying? Like because it, look, that's just the way it works. Look how I went with the Armada Arbery. If it wasn't for that tape that came on on social media, the McMichaels would still be walking around free because there would not be any public outcry because there wouldn't be any coverage because people heard about it but it wasn't anything for people to see because we've kind of been desensitized to that. But then just the other day, Shannon Brown, who played with the Lakers, somebody's coming into his house, he shoots, guess what? They arrest him right away. I mean, there is an imbalance when it comes to how they see us in yeah. the police community, in the yeah. judicial community. And, and but, you know, the thing, Mike, they, they do that because to justify their actions because they know when they're wrong. So they don't want to be charged with having a civil lawsuit and, and having to pay all that money. You know what I'm saying? So they do things, they charge you, just justify their actions, period. Knowing damn well they wrong. You know what I mean? That's how they do, period. Yeah, they do. But you know, we, we, we hear about these shootings all the time. We hear about all these, you know, what, what's it like when you hear about a mass shooting that happens? Like if they had a mass shooting that happened in, let's say it happened in, in I don't know. Minnesota. In, in Minnesota, and six <laughs> people died. You see it on CNN, you'd be like, oh, man. It's almost like you've been almost desensitized. How important is it for us as black people not to get desensitized when we see our brothers and sisters being gunned down in the streets? And it's happening. When you see somebody else get gunned down the street, it's almost like, wow, OK, another one? Mm, OK. And you kind of move on from it, because then you forget their names. How important right. is it for us not to be desensitized, Nietzsche? It's very important. I really think that um, we are so ready to do something to ignite change, we just don't know what to do on a larger scale, you know, because the hashtags, okay, we're bringing awareness, we protest, we march, but to really uh, evoke change, there is something else that has to be done. And I saw a video last week, Killer Mike actually um, mm. was talking about something Dick Gregory said. He said that until we start um, messing up the money, as far as like uh, the, the unions, the pensions, the insurance, and until we start tapping into that of these police and these injustices, we, we won't see change because at that point we are um, fucking up the money. So mm. even with that, it's like, okay, so we need somebody to maybe mobilize the move. We need, I don't know if it's a disconnect because I know people are working. I know people are fighting for us. We got a whole bunch of different movements going on. But at what point can we get everybody on the same page to make it? You know, to make a difference, I guess, because we we every week is another hashtag. So. That's what we talk about all the time on this show, well, Don. Is that we got so many different factions that yeah. we can't come together to form one strong united front to make yeah. that change because they see us being divided. Do we need the Black well, Panthers to come back, Mike? Hey, you know, but can the Black Panthers work along with Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter work along with the the other factions that are out there? Yeah, the Sharptons. I mean, I, I know they can, but will they? They can, no. but will they? That's the problem. No, no, because there's a level of humanity and there's a level of um, intersectionality that they won't address across those, right? So when we take these things into account, we have to take into account 
the nuance that exists within these different factions, right? So Black Lives Matter, we look at that. That is a that that's the millennials, that's the millennials move, right? Mm -hmm. Then you got the Black Panthers, which all the good things they did in the 60s and the 70s was still layered within patriarchy, was still layered within homophobia, was still mm -hmm. layered in gen gender roles. So is somebody from the Black Panthers going to be able to take derivative and, and direction from maybe a gay woman? No. And one of the leaders of Black Lives Matter, he is gay. So, so we see them butt heads, right? And, and, and they all forget that the only time Black people seen any real progress on a united front was during the civil rights movement when everybody moved well, together. There was the SNCC movement that was led by uh, 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 by uh, LGBTQI uh, people. Um, you have to, we can't do this on a man's back, right? We can't do this on the performative act of masculinity. We got to do this as black people. Black if we people. can do that, we can make a lot of change. That's a but big if gift. If we're constantly fighting and fighting about, I'm not listening to you because this is who you sleep with. And I'm not listening to you because you think you're a girl, but you are. Mm. I, what, what I do think is that what we have to get rid of is activism doesn't have one face, mm -hmm. which means it's not one way to be an activist. Mm -hmm. So for example, it's like, if you're not hashtagging enough, you're not an activist. If you're not bringing money into the program, you're not an activist. No, there's different ways to be an activist. And, and I want to give you this example, right? Harriet Tubman, <laughs> right? Say Harriet Tubman existed in 2020, right? Would she be hashtagging what time the freedom chain is going to leave? No, no. Everything will be done underground. It will be done silent. Right. You want to know why? Because activism, like racism, in its purest form, is only effective when it's done in silence. Mm -hmm. Because true systematic racism is not calling somebody a nigger. Right. True systematic racism is making sure you don't have access to resources to feed so, your family. So get them a job. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Someone. Making sure that you can't get access to get a home loan. You can't get a small business loan. Mm -hmm. so what we need to do. What we need to do is we need people to hashtag so we can bring awareness to it. Number one, mm -hmm. people like Sean King. We need Sean King. We need the Black Ma uh, Black Lives Matter movement. Why do we need that movement? We need that so that we can, once again, inception, let people know that we have value as people. But then we also need those people who you don't even see on the front lines, who are trying to get laws changed, who are trying to change things in the Constitution. Like you said, like you said, Mouse, one of the most profound things you said, and, and you said this a bunch of times, the civil rights movement, we all worked <laughs> together, right? There were different uh, factions of people, but they were working to change government. And not just in the White House, they were working to change local government. If we as Black people focus on our local government and try to make change in our neighborhoods first, we can then make the change there and grow outward. Because that's what true activism is. True activism is not stopping people from saying the N-word. True activism is changing the law so that we can survive and exist in this country freely. And until we realize what true activism is and stop blaming people that you're not a real activist, oh, you're not a real activist because you don't do this. You're right. not a, bottom line is activism has different faces. And if we work towards a common goal, we'll be good. And I think we as a people can do that. And it's not gonna happen in our lifetime. If your goal is to change what's happening in the world and you can see the change, you're not thinking big enough. Right. You have to make the change so that your kids' kids can see it. And that's the truth. You, you may not be able to make the change tomorrow, but you know what? Jackson will say, you know what? That law got changed because my dad and mouse worked on that. Right. Well, Mike Hill, Mike, Mike Hill and Donnie did that. Mike Hill, Donnie and Niche, they was talking about this. It, it happened now. Look, my kids can do that because they spoke about it. And that's true activism. But that's the that's the point, too. And I'll close on this is, yes, everybody's got to come to a common front in a sense. And I know you can do it your certain way, but I can't tear you down because you're doing it a certain right. way. That is right. not helping the cause whatsoever. Just because mm -hmm. you believe in nonviolence and somebody over here believes in, right. okay, I believe in my Second Amendment rights, don't tear me down because I'm not doing it your way when our cause right. and our goal is the same thing. Exactly. Just do it your way. You do it your, do way, it your way and we'll meet somewhere and we'll get right. to the come. But if you keep tearing somebody down, you are doing the oppressor's work. Job, that's counterproductive. That's right. You, that, you just, that's it.